use of an intensive physical exertion test as a final return to play measure in concussed athletes, a pro prospective cohort. The author, Dr. Cameron Marshall, your concussion doc. Uh, this is actually the first publication that we've had come out of the Complete Concussion Management System. So for those that don't know, Complete Concussion Management is a network of clinics uh, now with somewhat a global presence, at least in the English-speaking markets. We have clinics in Canada, the United States, Australia, and the United Kingdom. And we're all connected. All of those clinics are trained by us. They go through our training protocol. They come into our network, uh, and we work together with them uh, to help not only develop their concussion management program, but if they already have one in place to help them strengthen that concussion management program by providing them evidence-based protocols and things like that, as well as the tools to be able to effectively implement a concussion management program. And one of those tools is a complete concussion management concussion database system. All of the injury data and all of the baseline data that we do at all of those clinics get stored in that particular system. It also connects then with a smartphone app on the sidelines so that uh, uh, trainers on the sidelines, coaches on the sidelines can actually report an injury directly to a complete concussion management certified clinic which kickstarts the process which gets an athlete in right away and now there's a communication line between healthcare professional, athlete, teacher coach everybody because we're all connected through this digital platform which keeps everything together it keeps the messaging consistent and it lets everybody know what their role and responsibility is with a particular concussed athlete all of that information also then is stored on the cloud and it creates an anonymized database which is actually right now probably one of if not the largest concussion database in the world which then allows us to do some pretty big studies and so this study here actually we only did it between um, we did it for basically like 12 months or so and there was about 800 athletes that we included in this study and this study is on the Chicago Blackhawks test which is a final return to play measure that was developed by uh, Paul Goodman and Mike Gapsky who are um, on the medical staff of the Chicago Blackhawks NHL franchise and um, through a connection we got to know each other they gave us this test and we've been using it at all complete concussion management clinics for the past probably three or four years and Last year, in partnership with McMaster University here in Canada, we analyzed the data that came in from the Chicago Blackhawks test, or what it's known as in this paper is the Gapsky-Goodman test, named after uh, the people who, who invented it. And so, uh, long story short, the, um, actually I don't know how short it will be, but long story short anyway. Um, the return to play process for complete concussion management is that we go through kind of your typical like 24 to 48 hours of rest, then we get into a return to learn, return to work process. Once they've done that, we put them on the treadmill, we run them through the Buffalo concussion treadmill test, then we have them go back and kind of follow the Berlin return to play, which is having at least two non-contact practices. Once they've completed those two non-contact practices, we bring them back in and it's the medical clearance stage. The big knock that I have on Berlin right now and kind of the concussion world is we don't really have any type of standardized approach to what constitutes medical clearance. Right now it's typically done by a physician in, a, in an office in a rested state when the athlete has under no stress whatsoever and it just, how do you feel? I feel fine. Your symptoms are gone? Yep. Okay. I sign your letter and you go back to play. Knowing that concussion symptoms can be aggravated by physical exertion, right? Just letting somebody go and practice on their own, I don't feel is enough and we don't feel is enough because they're going to self-select their exercise intensity, right? If they're feeling a little bit of a headache, they're going to slow down a little bit. They're not going to push themselves and they're probably not going to tell you about the headache they had because they want to get back on the ice or on the field. So the Chicago Blackhawks test or the Gapsky Goodman test is great for this. And what it is is a... Um, uh, you, you can read it if you get the article. I put the whole protocol on there. It's a bike test, uh, which is heart rate up, heart rate down, heart rate up, heart rate down to mimic a dynamic sporting environment. And then it's followed by plyometrics. And so you're doing things like burpees and jumping rotations and all sorts of stuff to challenge the visual and vestibular systems to really um, – make sure that an athlete is ready to return to play. And so we do this, it takes about half an hour, we run them through this test, it's a standardized test, all the data gets stored on our system. 
If they pass that test, we then take them and run them through all of their baseline testing um, uh, protocols um, in an exerted state because that adds to the sensitivity of the protocol. If they pass that, then we clear them for full contact practice followed by full game play. Okay. Now, here's the results of this study. We had 759 athletes. Uh, the mean age was 15.5 years. The range of ages was 13 to 25 years old. 40% uh, were female, 60% were male. The most common mechanism of injury was hockey, uh, which was about 44% being in Canada. Uh, most of the data uh, was, was hockey players. Football was 11%, soccer was 10%, rugby was 6%, basketball was 6% uh, as well. And of these athletes, now keep in mind, when they do this test, they are completely asymptomatic at rest, asymptomatic at school, asymptomatic on the buffalo treadmill test, asymptomatic through two non-contact practices, and finally they get to us. And we run them through this test, and what we found was that 15% of athletes actually failed this test, potentially indicating an incomplete recovery. And we didn't actually publish this, but looking at people with baseline test data, we found that another 30% went on to fail some element of their baseline test. So all in all, having some sort of rigorous protocol in place as that medical clearance stage, which I believe that should become standard of practice across the board, we're actually able to hold back about 40% of people from returning to sport potentially too early and putting themselves at risk for subsequent injuries, right? It's not necessarily the number of concussions you get, but how close together they are. This is, a, this is the best thing you could do is to try and delay that recovery as best you can and put some sort of objective testing in place uh, to be able to do that. Now, some limitations to this study. I want to preference that. This, this study has not been validated. We don't really know what we're looking at. Even though people fail it, and by failure it means they report an increase in their symptoms um, that they didn't have before based on when they're doing it, we don't really know why that is. And what we found was that people that had pre-existing anxiety were more likely to report symptoms. So does anxiety play into um, symptom presentation? We also found that people that had more severe injuries, um, such as people coming in with a higher symptom scale, which is known as an injury severity um, marker, they were more likely to fail as well. So maybe that indicates that the injury was more severe and in fact is now taking them longer to recover and that's why they failed. Um, so there's some issues. We also found that people that played kind of non-cardiovascularly demanding sports like baseball, they were more likely to fail than people that played sports like hockey or football and that might be due to just um, not being as cardiovascular fit. So when you're doing an exercise that's rigorous and maybe you've been off sports for three weeks and now you're doing this test, maybe you're out of shape and you start to become symptomatic like dizziness, headaches and things like that. So I think we still have to flush some things out, uh, but this is encouraging news to say the least that we're potentially holding back 15% of people that are returning to sport too soon. So if you are not using some sort of physical exertion test as the final return to play measure uh, in your clinical management, um, I think you should really strongly consider adding that piece uh, to the puzzle. Um, it's just one more check. It protects you a little bit more from liability and it helps uh, athletes from returning too soon and putting themselves at risk uh, for further concussions. Mm -hmm.